Hi, hello, welcome, Microbe Hunter here, and today I'm going to put a wasp under the microscope. As a matter of fact, that what you see behind me is the stinger of a wasp. And uh, I'm also going to show you how I dealt with the wasp problem that I have here in my apartment, because some of the wasps actually started to build a nest inside uh, the wall. Well, stay tuned and let's get started. Well, behind me over there, you see a wasp's nest inside the insulation of my of the wall here um, yeah the holes that you see in the wall these were there because uh, I uh, mounted a lamp uh, on the wall and now the wasps kind of found it and now they're using uh, the, these holes um, yeah to build their own nest and I said okay well I'm going to use this opportunity not only to remove the wasps nest but also to put a wasp under the microscope um, and I'm going to show you now how I'm going to catch the wasps because all you need is you need a cup and a little bit of alcohol so what I have done is, is I have uh, put some tape uh, over the holes to prevent uh, the wasps from entering and leaving uh, the nest. Um, unfortunately, it didn't uh, work uh, quite well because the wasps started to remove uh, the tape. And you can see here that it actually, actually cut away uh, those round sections of tape uh, and uh, they have done this uh, using uh, their powerful jaws and uh, basically um, it was uh, totally pointless and it was absolutely without effect. So what I've done is I uh, organized myself some construction foam and I started uh, to spray this foam into all of those little uh, places uh, where wasps could have uh, could enter um, the styrofoam insulation material. And then I decided well before I remove all of the wasps I at least wanted to put one or two of them under the microscope and this is basically what I've done here. Is, is I uh, put some alcohol and some acetone on some tissue paper in a cup and then I went uh, and I tried to catch some of these wasps and of course the fumes uh, kind of uh, yeah they kind of uh, killed the wasp and uh, therefore uh, I could uh, easily put it under my stereo microscope. Uh, catching them was actually uh, not so difficult and after a couple of minutes uh, I could actually then put it under my stereo microscope and then I also decided to dissect it a little bit and to extract the stinger here you can still see the wasp moving around a little bit um, and uh, after a couple of minutes I could uh, easily uh, manipulate it. There's also a second possibility um, you can also take the insect um, and uh, put it uh, into the freezer of course and this also stops the movement. Uh, I used uh, so-called entomological needles. These are very very thin and very fine needles that can be used uh, to make insect collections and this is uh, what I've done here as well. I punctured uh, the insect using one of those needles and uh, then put the needle in, into a cork uh, and uh, this cork I could easily put uh, under my stereo microscope. Um, as a matter of fact uh, I did this uh, with uh, two separate wasps because uh, the first wasp unfortunately I was not very successful extracting this thing I don't know why uh, but uh, you'll see in a couple of minutes yeah um, I used my tweezers uh, to arrange the antenna and everything so that uh, I could uh, get a very nice uh, picture um, and then uh, basically it was uh, quite uh, quite easy to observe it directly under the stereo microscope at low magnification first um, and then I actually zoomed in a little bit higher yeah that was the first view that I got um, yeah those insects uh, they do look uh, quite uh, quite interesting when you magnify them zoomed in. I, ha I do have a, a stereo microscope with a continuous zoom but every time when I zoom I have to also adjust the, the focus um, again and if you look very carefully you're able to see here a tiny part of the stinger and uh, this here is the compound eye. Compound eye basically means that uh, there are many many smaller simple eyes arranged um, and uh, this is a typical arrangement for all insects by the way. Here you can see the needle um, again and uh, what I then have done is, is I tried to make a stacked image and this means that I took many pictures um, of a different focus level and then I tried to combine it together into one final image that is in focus all the way through so that's what you see here. Um, I think it looks, uh, looks quite nice and I also made a second one um, from a different angle um, and this also worked uh, quite well. So what you have to do is you always have to change the focus in a very organized way um, and uh, then the software will combine it. Well this is basically the place uh, where I injected the foam and the wasps well they tried to gather around it and they were not quite successful in entering uh, their nest that's a good thing. I did not want to spray any poison but I think that might be the only possibility. Yeah this these here these are the yeah, the jaws um, of, uh, of the wasp um, and here again I have a stacked image uh, 
looks uh, quite uh, quite nice here as well yeah again a portrait shot of the wasp and of course uh, the wing um, wasps are belong to the so-called hymenoptera and this means is that they have two pairs of wings uh, front wings these are larger and then also the hind wings which are a little bit smaller um, and uh, here I put them now under the compound microscope uh, and uh, those dark uh, thick things that you see there these are vessels and I think they might also give the wasp wing its strength and stability uh, also interesting to see a lot of tiny little hair covering the wing. I think this might be important uh, for aerodynamics, I can imagine. And if you look very carefully here, right in the center you see uh, this row of little tiny hooks. And uh, these hooks, they are joining the front and the back wing, so they're kind of interlocked. Um, so I think uh, that the wasp actually flaps both of them yeah, in the same way and uh, that they basically yeah, act basically like one wing, one uh, complete wing. And those little hooks seem to be there to connect uh, the front and the back wing. At least that's uh, what I assume, uh, because uh, otherwise why would they be there? I think uh, quite fascinating to see that also the wings of other insects do also look similar. For example, flies, um, they have also those tiny little hair um, on the surface and uh, fly wings uh, look therefore yeah, almost, um, almost identical through the microscope here. Yeah. Here we have, uh, again, a big overview. You can actually distinguish different insect types and also different species by simply looking at the pattern of the veins of the wing. Um, so there are actually um, identification books uh, that where you have to look at the wing and then by, by the structure of the wing you can actually then identify which uh, type of insect um, it is. Yeah, here again looks uh, quite nice and uh, the good thing about wings is, is that they're quite flat and therefore easy to put uh, under the compound microscope they're also quite transparent and if it were not for those tiny little hair it wouldn't be possible to see the wing maybe in the first place at all so what have i done next uh, i decided uh, then uh, to extract uh, the stinger um, of uh, the wasp and in order to do that i used uh, my dissecting scissors and i tried to cut the Abdomen, abdomen off uh, and uh, to extract the gland and also the stinger. Uh, the first try unfortunately was not uh, very successful so um, it was a little bit difficult as well for me to do all of the dissection under the stereo microscope. Um, I was shaking a little bit and the insect was not quite stable on the cork and it was always moving and rotating um, as I was trying to cut it apart. Um, but after some time I was able, yeah, I was a little bit successful and I was able to um, get some of the tissue out um, from the wasp here um, using my tweezers, my scissors. A lot of patience was, nece patience was necessary here. Um, but uh, what I've done then is I've taken this tissue and I then placed the tissue, the soft uh, part uh, um, into a little uh, yeah bit of water um, and then I tried to uh, take everything apart hoping to find the stinger but unfortunately I was not successful by the way those uh, bright things that you see these are the reflections of my ring light uh, of the stereo microscope so yeah, I took everything apart uh, but unfortunately no stinger so maybe I have somehow lost it somewhere in the process of dissection I don't know um, so I had to take a second wasp and I tried it again and this time I took it apart without the water um, and I was uh, more successful here um, and already after a few minutes I was able to get the stinger by the way um, the poison is called melatonin and also acetylcholine which is a neurotransmitter uh, this is injected uh, when the wasp stings and this uh, triggers the pain receptors so yeah that is of course a very effective way to leave wasps and bees alone yeah and here's the stinger okay so i'm using again my stereo microscope here to zoom in a pretty large and uh, scary looking and uh, no wonder that uh, they hurt so much and the stinger in the center there is a little canal uh, for the poison um, so there's actually a gland a poison gland for the toxin attached uh, to the stinger i was actually hoping to also have a look at this uh, but in the when it stinks and the poison is uh, traveling through the canal and is injected. What I've done next is, is um, I decided to, to look at um, everything here under the uh, um, compound microscope and here what we see is a dark field um, image um, of the stinger. Yeah, looks, looks quite nice um, and as well, of course. Well, I want to use this time now, it's, I'm still not finished with the video, but still I want to use this time now to invite you over to my Microbe Hunter Microscopy 
YouTube channel. You're just watching now the so-called the main channel. Um, but I do also have a side channel where I talk a lot about the microscopy technology and where I also give a whole bunch of tutorials. And if you're interested in that, I would like you to invite you over. The links are below. And I also would like to invite you over to visit uh, my Amazon affiliate web shop if you're interested in doing some microscope shopping and accessory shopping. And I also would like to thank, of course, uh, my supporters over Patreon and also over GoFundMe. Um, and uh, I think it's, uh, I'm very happy that uh, the channels and the projects that I have defined uh, so much uh, support by so many people. Yeah, all of the links uh, can be found uh, in the description. But of course, you're now interested. What did I do? How did I remove the wasps? Well, yes, uh, um, there is a possibility to use poison, which I ultimately did not do. I tried a new technique. I tried uh, to uh, yeah, basically use a vacuum cleaner. And in order to do that, I first prepared again some of these tissue papers uh, with acetone and alcohol, some volatile um, solvents, which are not too harmful for humans either. So you shouldn't use any paint thinner or something like that. Uh, might not be good for your vacuum cleaner either. And certainly you do not want to inhale those fumes. But I prepared those tissue papers and I, um, yeah, I vacuumed them in. And th therefore the fumes are now inside the, yeah, the collecting bag of the vacuum cleaner. Um, and then I went around and I started to, to vacuum the wasps. And this way I have uh, collected several hundred wasps. And uh, my hope is, is that if I'm able to reduce uh, the wasp population significantly, then uh, maybe also the next generation will not get enough food uh, by the wasp, by the adult wasps, and hopefully this is going to kind of stop the reproductive cycle. So you can see here that I'm actually vacuuming around and uh, collecting wasps. A lot of them are actually collected, and uh, right now um, there are almost no wasps left over. I think this should be enough for today. I wish you all the best. Please do check out all of the other videos which should be somewhere over here. All the best. Happy micro hunting. Bye bye. See you around next time.